What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, I'm here to give my thoughts and opinions on this year's SummerSlam, man. And I'm not gonna lie to you, um, for those who saw our live stream, we we missed the first part, like the first half of SummerSlam. Um, so uh, we was able to catch the second half. Uh, we was at my friend's uh, wedding uh, dinner. He had a little wedding ceremony dinner before his actual wedding. So we went there to support him. So that's why we missed the first half of SummerSlam. But best believe you knew you knew we were gonna check out the, the remaining half of it. And I just got home not too long ago and I just watched the first half myself. So I'm gonna be giving my thoughts and opinions on everything as the show as a whole, but I will say this before I get into it, enjoyable. Very enjoyable for the parts that I did see on the live stream and for the parts that I did see at home, very enjoyable. But let's kind of get through this, man. I don't want to waste or take up too much of your guys' time, man. Let's get right into this one. The very first match, the match to open up the show, Becky Lynch versus Bianca Belair. Me, personally, I wasn't really looking forward to this match, but I figured they would have still a pretty good showing, and it completes their whole rivalry from last year. Uh, Bianca getting squashed to this year. Bianca getting her redemption. They opened up the show. Solid match. Um, I didn't know uh, Bianca was from Tennessee, so she was the hometown favorite. People were loving for loving her. The crowd was going uh, really amped up for her and what she had going on. And it was a solid match. It was enjoyable um, for the most part. I expected them to put on a decent match. They they're really they're really good together in the ring. But I think I think a lot of us are really intrigued to talk about what happened at the end of their match. So obviously Bianca gets the win, which I predicted, and we get a face turn. We, we somewhat get a face turn. Well, at the time of watching it, you wasn't sure. But um, um, I can't even think of her name. Uh, Becky was basically like, you know, stretching her hand out for Bianca to shake her hand. Kind of reminiscent of when uh, Be uh, Becky came back last year and she wanted to shake. Um, uh, Bianca wanted to shake Becky's hand. So they shook hands. They hugged each other. And then... Bailey's music hit. Of course, a lot of people have been speculating. Uh, I wasn't uh, sure if Bailey. We, I figured she was going to return, but I didn't think she was going to return in that match. I thought she was going to return in the Ronda match, but we're going to talk about that. What happened there? But she returns, but she didn't come alone. She brought Io Shirai and Dakota Kai with her. Crowd chanting, "Holy shit!" Uh, when you guys were telling me about this in the chat before we even was able to record, I was looking forward to it. You know what I'm saying? So when I saw it happen live, crowd was happy. And it looks like they're going to align themselves with Bailey. And she came back and she's talking her trash in the ring with Bianca. Like, you thought I was going to come back by myself? I got the best in the world with me. And what was cool is seeing Becky stand right next to her like, what's up? You, you know what I'm saying? You want You want the smoke? And for the first time in quite some time, you heard a Becky chant, a very loud Becky chant, which confirmed the face term. I wasn't sure, but this confirmed she's a face now. Just, just off of what we just saw there, she's a face now. And it's going to be interesting what they do. A lot of people are liking this move, bringing it up to the main roster, having them align themselves with Bailey, I want to see what they can do. There's more women in the women's division now, and I'm very intrigued. And this is going to be a very good opponent for uh, Bianca Belair. And shout out to the people that was telling me, uh, I think y'all were Instagramming me, were telling me on Instagram, hey, bro, Ross, I think it's going to be Bailey. Bailey's going to be the one to return and to face Bianca. You were right, so I got to give you your uh, props on that. But ultimately, good way to start off the show. Cannot complain about it. We got a great return, and we got uh, an NXT call-up. So I'm interested to see what they do. Definitely, I'm cool with them bringing up uh, more people for the, for the women's division. They definitely need it. All right. Logan Paul in the Miz. I have to talk about this. I saw a lot of you guys in the chat saying, yo, Logan Paul and The Miz, pretty good match. Not going to lie to you, after watching that match, seeing Logan hold his, hold himself, like, I guess you could say by himself. He's not in a tag team. He's holding his own in the ring. Kudos, Logan, bro. 
kudos. Oh, man. The one downside I have about this match is I, I really wish Tommaso Ciampa was doing his own thing. I really do wish he was doing his own thing. I feel like he needs to be in his own type of mid-card feud and really start building him up. And it looks like that's going to happen with what they got him uh, potentially lined up with AJ Styles. So the match started off slow and methodical. They're just kind of messing with each other, talking trash to each other. Um, Miz is a very, I said the Miz. I mean, the Miz is good in the ring. He's serviceable. But it was really the Logan Paul show. He showed out. He showed his athleticism. He showed that he knows what he's doing. And I can appreciate it. Uh, at one point in the match, uh, Tommaso Ciampa ends up getting, you know, he ends up getting ejected. That's when AJ Styles music hit. I know they got a little beef going on. AJ starts attacking Tommaso. So I think they're going to have their own feud. I'm, I'm fine with that. Tommaso needs to be by himself feuding with someone to get himself more over on the on the roster side. You need to stay away from Miz. I, I, I just didn't like him coming out there with matching suits with the Miz. Wasn't a big fan of that. But I get it. It's to set up what they got going on with AJ and Tommaso. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they do together. I think that's a really good pairing. Um, but we got to talk about, obviously, the one of the craziest spots from the entire show. I just want to say, Logan, bro, I, I don't know what you made of, but I respect it. My mans got the Miz dead to rights, puts him on the announce table, goes to the top rope, taunts the Miz's wife, throws the little turnbuckle pad at Maurice, jumps from the top rope, does a frog splash onto the Miz through the table. Holy shit, Chance. When I say watching that, finally actually getting a chance to watch the match, I stood up. I clapped. <laughs> By myself at home, I clapped because I can't, I can't take nothing away from the kid, bro. You can tell he trained his ass off, and you can tell he loves what he's doing out there. This is not just, just for fun, like, oh, it's just not to pass the time by. That frog splash from the top rope to the announce table, beaut chef's kiss, beautiful, executed beautifully. Crazy spot. Not only did he do that, got him back in the ring. Maurice tried to hit the distraction, of course. Logan hit Miz with his own finishing move. Hit him with the skull crushing finale with a one, two, three. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. That's the one thing that they probably gonna have to work on. Cause I know they want him to be a face. He doesn't he doesn't come off as a face. But when he's in that ring, he comes off as a face, bro. That's the crazy thing. He, when he's talking, he comes off as a heel. But when he's in the ring and doing the moves, comes off as the face crowd loved it i loved it uh that was a great match that was a that was a good that was a good solid match for miz to be for miz and for logan for what they did i enjoyed that match for sure definitely enjoyed that match if you haven't yet go go watch it go watch it you will be surprised by what logan paul well if you saw what he did at wrestlemania you probably won't be surprised but that was very very good United States Championship match. Bobby Lashley versus Austin Theory. This match was actually really, really, really quick. Like, quicker than I expected it to be. Um, it was okay for what it was. Um, what was really interesting is the story that they're telling with Austin Theory. And they've been doing this for weeks. Actually, ever since he's won the briefcase. It's like he's the classic chicken shit heel but for whatever reason he can't win matches i don't think i mean y'all could correct me if i'm wrong i don't think austin theory has won a match since he's won the money in the bank and here he lost the match he lost he lost the match to a submission he tapped out quickly once again and i'm okay with bobby lashley retaining hopefully he can move on to someone else they and they can really get a real good feud a real good program for the united states championship um, this was an okay match. It's not something that I'll remember. I, it's, it's not not because it was bad. I think their match they had at Money in the Bank was much better, way better than this. 
Um, but it's just I'm really confused on what they're doing with Theory. Because ever since he's got that briefcase, he can't seem to get a goddamn win, to be honest with you. So this was a middle of the road map. Not bad, but they've had they've had better at money in the bank, in my personal opinion. And Austin Theory taps out very quickly. And I, I'm not sure what happens, but we're going to talk about him towards the end of this, this crazy show. We got the Judgment Day versus the Mysterios. No disqualification. I did not care about this match because I'm tired of seeing this match. I'm tired of their back and forth. I just want this feud, honestly, to be done and over with. But I think a lot of us knew what the implications of what was going to happen in this match. So I'm, I'm just going to skip to that part because I kind of skimmed through this. You know, as I was watching, I was watching a few parts and the crowd didn't really seem too, too invested into it. They started off hot. But I think people are just tired of this and they were really looking forward to, you think you know me, Edge himself. At one point, the Mysterio's are about to get sent to the Gulags. Uh, Finn Balor's asking for a chair. This is a no disqualification tag. And all of a sudden, the lights go out and you see flames going up these steps. And then you see Edge rising from the flames with a red jacket the black shades with a demonic look and he runs down the ramp way kicks the hell out of damian priest crowds going crazy hits a spear on finn balor damian priest comes into the mix hits a spear on him then he puts uh finn balor on the ropes for the double 619 the stereo 619 and ray hits the splash for the one two three victory I think that's all that everyone cared about to see Edge and Edge is looking maniacal at Judgment Day. And that's what I'm excited about. Now, here's a, it's a double edged sword. Edge, I don't think is coming back to lose. I think Edge is going to come back to dismantle Judgment Day. And it sucks because that group could have been great under somebody else's creative. <laughs> I think it could have it should have been great, but I don't see him coming back to lose. I think Judgment Day is about to meet their Judgment Day. And I'm looking forward to the promos and, and what Edge has to say here. I think everyone was more hyped about that than the actual match. The match, i probably not going to go back and watch it again. I'm only going to watch just to see Edge come back. And I think a lot of us were like that. So it was okay. But hopefully this is the last of Mysterios and Judgment Day. No more, please. Triple H, no more. But the return itself was the highlight of this whole match and segment. Pat McAfee versus Happy Corbin. Another banger. Another match that I enjoy thoroughly. Happy Corbin coming out there per usual. But what made this entrance so great from Pat McAfee is having a crowd of men, like a, a choir of men, singing bum ass Corbin in a melodic tone. Oh my God, that was funny. And also my guy, Pat McAfee coming out there with some more Jordans. And you know what's funny? Hold on, I'm about to get them for you. I actually wore these shoes today. Pat McAfee had these on during the match. Now they, they weren't the same exact version. I believe they were actually the DMP Jordans. This one has the 23 on the back. The other one actually has the jump man on the back. But the fact that Pat McAfee had these on, I was like, all right, you gotta win, bro. You gotta win for me, bro. We both had the same shoes on. You gotta win for me. Match was great. Pat McAfee, he just he's fantastic in the ring for someone that's not traditionally a wrestler. And it's another case of someone that takes the wrestling business serious and they enjoy being out there. They don't take it as a joke. He my man was doing superplexes off the top rope. Dude is athletic as hell. Love this match. This match was great. This match was fun. Back and forth. Baron Corbin definitely healing it up. Pushing Michael Cole. Talking trash to Michael Cole. Putting on a headset. Just disrespecting Pac. This was so good. And I loved it. The reference of getting knocked down. And if you guys saw SmackDown. Uh, Baron Corbin kicked Pat McAfee in the jewels. So it was a little bit of a revenge when the ref went down during the match. Pat McAfee ends up kicking Baron Corbin in the jewels, man. And he ends up getting the win. And you know what? I'm okay with it. 
Pac is he's great. He's fucking fantastic. Fantastic. Love Pat McAfee on commentary. Love what he does in the ring. I don't have a problem seeing him in future matches, one-off matches, because he's so goddamn good. Pat McAfee's a gem. Um, it's an okay match. It's an okay match. I, I think this would be one of the few matches on the show. I would actually go back and watch again just to really be amazed at Pat McAfee out here giving, giving it his all. And credit to Baron Corbin for healing it up, man. It was very enjoyable. Crowd was enjoying it. I was enjoying it. So now the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship match, the Usos versus the Street Profits. Special guest referee Jeff Jarrett. Not going to lie to you. I was kind of disappointed with this match. Their match at Money in the Bank was better. This one was starting to pick up towards the end. But for me, I, I, I preferred their match at Money in the Bank. Their match at Money in the Bank was much better uh, in my personal opinion. But it seems like this match is planting seeds for something potentially bigger. So towards the end of the match, I want to say, and I correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I think I think uh, Montez Ford had hit like a... a I don't know if it was a frog splash or I forgot what move he had hit, but he didn't get the three count. So he starts arguing with the ref, like getting really irritated more than normal. Like he was getting in Jeff Jarrett's face. Like he was like, bro, what the fuck? So he tagged in uh, Angelo Dawkins or whatnot. He tagged him in or whatnot. Then the Usos tag team uh, Montez Ford outside the ring, throw him over the barricade. And then they end up, Getting pretty much uh, Angelo Dawkins by himself. Hit him with their finishing move or whatnot. And right when um, when Montez Ford was about to dive right back into the ring to break up the count, the match was over. He wasn't able to get there in enough time. And it was kind of anti anticlimactic. I think a lot of people were expecting more from them in this match. It definitely was for me. Uh, it was still okay. I just feel like their match at Money in the Bank was better. But the real story to tell here, the real story to talk about specifically is the fact that Montez Ford was just sitting there. He just had this look, this, this I'm about to go rogue look. Like it just, it was just like this look of like despair. And I don't know what that's about. I, I'm, I, I'm willing to bet they're doing something with, Montez Ford, he may end up turning heel on Angelo Dawkins because you can he could possibly go with the bros because of you that lost type situation. So it'll be interesting to see. Would I want him to be heel and turn on him? No, I think they still need some more tag teams in the division, but I don't know. We'll see. But they weren't able to get the job done, and I don't think they're gonna have another title opportunity against the Usos. Well, we I hope they don't because I don't think we need to see it again. Honestly, because this was a they, they got a clean finish on that. So there was no screwy finish here. So I don't know. We'll see what they do. But I'm really interested to see what they do with Montez because it's like they're planting the seeds because of just how he was looking. It was it was it was definitely different from how he normally looks. All right. So this little mini segment of Matt Riddle. I like this version of Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle comes through the crowd. He's talking trash. He's, he's talking trash to uh to Seth Rollins because, you know, Seth Rollins ended him per storyline. It's like, Seth, I'm not done with you, bro. Come out here. Get your ass out here. And I'm going to beat the crap out of you. I like that aggressive Matt Riddle. That's what I want to see. Seth Rollins come out there, 40,000 people chanting his song, singing his song. He runs to the ring, and they start brawling. And I loved every second of it. But, of course, <laughs> Matt Riddle gets sent right back to the gulags. Uh, officials start breaking it up. And there's more to come with them. And I like what they're doing with Matt Riddle here. I like that aggressiveness. No more of the bros and having fun. Sometimes you got to fight. And I like that aggressiveness. I like... I, it reminded me, if you guys remember, when Seth Rollins took over NXT. He took over the show. And because he wanted to fight, he wanted... He wanted to put his hands on Triple H. That's exactly what it reminded me of. If it, if, if that reminded y'all, if y'all remembered that. When uh, Seth Rollins was trying, he had to smoke. He wanted to smoke with Triple H and he interrupted NXT TakeOver. One of very cool, um, a very cool moment. That's what that whole segment reminded me of. So 
definitely I want to see where they take things and uh, what they end up doing. But I like this Matt Riddle. The aggressive, very serious. I'm here to kick your ass, Matt Riddle. We need more of that. All right. So we got the SmackDown's Women's Championship match. Liv Morgan versus Ronda Rousey. I've been saying this for weeks. It just doesn't make sense for Liv to win this match from Ronda. Not in traditional means. I can't believe it. I like Liv. And Liv, you know, is a fan favorite. But realistically, just even on from a story storyline standpoint, I just don't see it. We're talking about Ronda. We're talking about Liv. I, let's just keep it a stack here. And the match proved that to be true. Liv pretty much got her ass whooped the majority of this match. The, the, the story was Ronda was going to kick the living shit out of her and try to break her arm. And that's what it was. Like, they had to damn near stop the match to see if Liv could even keep fighting. That's what this whole match was. The crowd was kind of... They were there, but they not... It was really just... They were... The crowd wasn't too, too into this match because it was one-sided. It was very one-sided. Towards the end of the match, Ronda has Liv in another arm bar, but Liv was able to get leverage, and Liv had, her, had Ronda's shoulders pinned to the mat, but Liv ended up tapping at the same time that the ref counted three. Or so we thought. So Liv retained the title. Ronda's piss. You look at the replay. Liv Morgan tapped right before the ref counted to three or whatnot. And the ref didn't see her tap. So with that being said, Ronda goes rogue. Oh, and it was great. Ronda tried to snap. Liv Morgan's arm in half. Tried to snap her shit off. The ref tries to break it up. And you know what the ref gets for his trouble? He gets sent to the gulags as well. The ref ends up in an arm bar. He's writhing in pain. They had to get a other officials out here to break it up. The ref was sent to the gulags. Liv Morgan was almost... I mean, she can you can say she was kind of sent to the gulags. Not all the way. But she was definitely banged up. And it looks like we may have a heel Ronda, which I think that's what we've been needing. I think that's what will be better for her. I don't know if it can make her, you know, you know, more entertaining on the show. We'll see. But a heel Ronda that's there to kill people, <laughs> damn near, I'm all for it. So I don't know how long Liv will hold that title. I'm just being honest with you. I don't know how long she holds that title. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what happens next. Probably their next match will be maybe a, a no disqualification, whatever the situation is. But I just don't see Liv holding it, holding the title for long. But I could be wrong. We will see. But the match itself, uh, it's not something that I definitely watch again. It wasn't that entertaining. The most entertaining part was the fact that Ronda went rogue on multiple people at the end. And I think she may have turned heel. So we will see what happens with that one. And of course... The main event, the undisputed WWE Universal Championship match, Roman versus Brock, last man standing. This match was everything I wanted it to be. This match, to me, solidifies the end of their saga. This match was probably the craziest last man standing match I have seen in a very long time. The last good one I saw was between Roman and Kevin Owens. This one, carnage. And I loved every second of it. The only thing we were missing was flaming tables. All right. Roman doing his Roman stick. What else? You got Brock out there. He's about to come down to the ramp. He stops. Goes back up to the ramp. And there's a fucking random tractor just sitting there. So he drives the tractor to the ring. Lifts the little cage up, the little shovel up, hops on top of it, sitting in it, or like standing in it. He has his own microphone in there, by the way. Don't know where that came from. He announces himself. Roman is, you know, doing his thing. I don't know if the titles. And Brock just jumps from it, attacks Roman, and the match is on way. When I say this was, it started, it was one-sided for the majority of the first half of this match. Brock had total control. Suplexes, all this other stuff. They started going outside the ring. They started going into the crowd. Um, suplexes on the floor. Um, I love the, they, they introduced tables very quickly. They got two tables. Paul Heyman gets involved, trying to distract Brock. 
Roman hits a Samoan drop to one table. Then Roman hits a, a I want to say uh, some type of a power slam or like a it was it was it, he slammed Brock through the other table. So Brock's back is already bleeding a little bit from the table fragments and stuff like that. Brutal. Well, I wouldn't say brutal, but it was enjoyable. I was like, okay, they're warming it up, but still, Brock mostly had control over this match. And you knew at some point that the Usos were going to get involved. Stairs was being used. You know, Roman is barely getting to the 10 count or whatnot. So, Roman says, you know what? Uh, Brock says, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to put Roman in the little uh, shovel on my tractor. So, you. Lowers the uh, the tractor, shovel, puts him in it, raises him up above the ring, throws, dumps him in the ring like common trash. Brock gets into the ring. Roman hits him with a guillotine, trying to tap him out, but it didn't work. Brock reverses it, hit him with his own guillotine. He passed him out. Roman's out. I'm thinking, oh, dog, the match is over. Please don't let it in like that. Roman barely gets on his feet. At this point, it's just looking like Roman may be out of it. He's getting hit with suplexes. He's just all over the place. You know, I'm like, oh, this, this may be it. He got hit with an F5. I'm like, this, this may be it for my boy Roman Reigns. Even though Roman was able to hit a couple spears, it still wasn't enough. So, Brock says, you know what? Screw this, bro. I've had enough of this bull crap. So, he gets back into his track. I'm like, what the fuck he's about to do? Is he going to go back up the ramp and get another vehicle of destruction? No. He decides to move the whole damn ring with the tractor. He pushes the ring. The ref gets out of there quickly. He's like, I don't want no parts of this. And I've never seen this ever in my life. He uses the tractor to lift up the ring while Roman is in it. And Roman just rolls out the ring. Crowd going crazy. Me and Doug going crazy. Chat going crazy. I'm just like, what in the hell am I watching? The ring is literally just standing in the air. Everything under the ring is exposed. The ring area is just tore up from it. Insanity. So Roman's dead out there. The Usos come into the mix. They get sent to the gulags for their troubles or whatnot. Roman is able to hit a spear from the distraction. Actually, what it was, Paul Heyman tried to give the titles to Brock. Like, leave him alone. Leave my tribal chief alone. And that's when the Usos came into the mix. All this other stuff. Just chaos ensued. Roman was able to hit the spear. But Roman's gassed. He's tired. Oh, some theory music hit. We knew it was going to happen. He runs out there with a ref. Right before he hits Roman Reigns with the briefcase. Lays him out. Right before he could even say he's about to cash in. <laughs> Austin Theory gets sent right back to the gulags. But Brock Lesnar, he F5s him right onto the suitcase, onto the floor. Austin Theory's done. Austin Theory's done. At this point, Brock Lesnar is trying to fight off the Usos and Roman. Roman hits uh, Brock with a couple spears. Brock will not stay down. He won't stay down. He just won't. So... Guess what he does? He hits him with one of the WWE. He hits him with the WWE Championship belt. Cross the head. Won't stay down. All right. Cool. All right. So, uh, I, I may be getting this out of order because there was so much chaos. He, this was so funny. He actually, I, I'm skipping a part. He actually does F5 Paul Heyman. When Paul Heyman is trying to plead to him to stop this, he F5s Paul Heyman through the table and Paul Heyman didn't move for the rest of that segment Paul Heyman died right there throw up the X for Paul Heyman very funny at this point Roman gets the uh uh Austin Theory's beef briefcase beats him down with it while he's on the ground like this is for your ass coming out here and then proceeds to beat the living crap out of Roman with the dented up money in the bank briefcase he still stands up hit him with the wwe championship he still stands up hit him with the universal championship he still stands up so you say you know what 
fuck it. So they just piled on all the carnage. They put steel uh, the steel stairs on them. They put the announce table on them. They put everything on him so Brock can't get to the count of 10. Roman stands on top and boom, there it is. Roman wins because Brock couldn't, he couldn't overcome the carnage and trash and destruction that was on top of him. And Brock, I mean, Roman Reigns retains the titles and um, this was great. This, that last match made the fans, I'm, I'm willing to bet the fans went home happy. I went home happy. That for me was nothing technical. It was the last man standing match, and it was everything I wanted, except the flaming tables. That's about the only thing I'm, I would have loved. Everything I, if you would have told me they were going to destroy the ring, but not how they normally do, where it just breaks. He literally lifted up the ring to throw him out of it. If you would have told me that, I wouldn't have believed it. This was fantastic. It was a ten out of ten because it was fun. It was just utter chaos. Best. Fantastic way to end off SummerSlam. That was a 10 out of 10 match for me. I would go watch that again because it was so fun. It started off a little slow. It started off a little slow um, only because Roman was getting his ass beat. But it, it picked up quick and it picked up fantastic. I enjoyed that match. It was fun. I There was plenty of times I'm like, bro, it, I, was, I thought Brock was going to win it. But he didn't. And hopefully this is the very last time we see this happen. We don't need this no more. This was... If that was their last match to end off their saga, I'm okay with it. That was fun. That match for me was a 10 out of 10. It's, I, I, matches I call 10 out of 10s are the matches I can go back and watch again. If you guys remember, I think it was like a fatal four-way. I think I don't know if it was at the Great Balls of Fire or SummerSlam where it was Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, and Samoa Joe. That match, total carnage. I think it was Great Balls of Fire. Or SummerSlam, it was one of the two. That was a 10 out of 10 match. It wasn't nothing technical about it. It was just fun, carnage, and a car wreck. 10 out of 10. Matches, that, for me, all matches that are 10 out of 10s or 9 out of 10s, they don't have to be technical classics. They got to be matches that I'm willing to randomly on a Tuesday want to rewatch while I'm eating my dinner. That's a match I am going to forever remember and go back to watch from time to time. Brock versus Roman, last man standing match, where Brock literally tried to <laughs> destroy him <laughs> with the actual ring itself. That was fun. But overall, SummerSlam, for me, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give this a solid 8. This was an 8. This was a good, good show. Um, the matches that weren't that entertaining weren't bad. You know, I think it mostly comes to it comes down to the booking, how they've been booked for weeks and, you know, really just repeats. But the the returns, the the uh, the debuts, um, the, the matches itself, some of the matches itself were very entertaining. And that last match was great. Everything I wanted it to be. I eight out of ten show for me. Eight out of ten. This show actually makes me want to go check out Monday Night Raw. So if you guys want me to stream Monday Night Raw, I may actually do it because there's a lot of things that happen on the show that I really want to see what do they do with. It got you excited to see what they actually do with Monday Night Raw. How are they going to recap things? What new storylines are going to be created? So overall, the first pay-per-view show booked by Triple H or, you know, uh, head of creative by Triple H. 8 out of 10 for me. It was fun. Fun. I suggest you guys go back, watch some of these matches. Definitely watch uh, the Becky and, Becky and Bianca uh, uh, match was was enjoyable. You definitely watch that and watch that for Bailey's return and the, and the debuts of Io Shirai and Dakota Kai. Um, I would go back and watch the Logan Paul match. That was pretty good. I would go back and watch, um, uh, what's his name? Pat McAfee. Baron Corbin, definitely go back, watch the main event. And then all the other segments of Edge returning and Ronda going rogue. Uh, those are things you could definitely check out like on YouTube and stuff like that. But a fair amount of this show, very enjoyable. Definitely worth your time. I give it an 8 out of 10. So comment down below. Let me know. What you guys rate this show on a scale of 1 to 10? Did you guys enjoy SummerSlam this year, man? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.